During the launcher campaign, everyone in French Guiana and throughout Europe has been conscious that this is a historic mission. It is a landmark in space cooperation, the conjunction of a legendary Russian launcher with the operational expertise of the European spaceport. The payload is also of paramount importance, opening the road to Europe's very own satellite navigation system. Since the late 50s, the Soyuz has been flown over 1,700 times from Baikonur in Kazakhstan and Plasetsk in northern Russia. Since 1996, it has been commercialized by the StarSem offshoot of Ariane Space. Manufactured 800 kilometers east of Moscow at the Samara Space Center, the rocket now has an additional equatorial launch pad. Situated just north of the Ariane 5 complex, it replicates the Russian infrastructures with an integration hall where the rocket is assembled, a launch control center, and, in a change to the Russian process, an 800-ton mobile gantry to mate the uppermost stage, the payload and fairing, on the rocket when it is erected. From this site, five degrees north of the equator, Soyuz will be able to place practically three tons into a geostationary transfer orbit that's nearly 50% more than from Baikonur. French Guiana will thus have a three-strong family, the heavy lift Ariane 5, Europe's upcoming new Vega for smaller satellites, and Soyuz for intermediate mass payloads, already often used by the European Space Agency. ESA is the biggest customer of Soyuz. Uh, nine, nine launches already uh, made uh, with Soyuz for ESA missions. 11 contract signs, so it's, uh, we need Soyuz. And uh, I think that this, uh, this launcher, which has sent uh, Gagarin in orbit, is now in French Vienna, and uh, I think that it's a fantastic symbol also. The in-orbit validation phase satellites aboard the Soyuz have been manufactured by a consortium including EADS Astrium and Thales Alenia Space. With another pair to be lofted next year, they will confirm the performance of the Galileo system and form the nucleus of the constellation expected to be fully operational with 30 satellites. Since 2005, the experimental Jove A and Jove B craft have been testing critical components of the system, such as the ultra precise atomic clocks. To compute its position by triangulation, a satellite navigation receiver needs to register the signals of four satellites, whose timing signals must be rigorously in step. The Galileo clocks will be accurate to one second in three million years. Galileo also represents a big step for Europe. For the first time, EU member states are funding a major space program defined and developed by the European Space Agency. The European Space Agency has primarily a technical role. We are uh, designing the system, procuring the various system components, satellites, ground segment, integrating and validating the whole system, and making sure it works uh, for the benefit of all users in Europe. Europe's EGNOS system, which uses a network of geostationary satellites and ground stations to enhance American GPS signals, has already demonstrated many of the Galileo future services. On the roads, for maritime or air transport, in fact, for anything that moves on Earth, Galileo will bring real-time positioning to within a meter allowing better management, saving fuel and increasing safety. In agriculture, precision farming techniques can be used, guiding tractors automatically, allowing localized distribution of fertilizers, and livestock can be managed at a distance. With individual handsets or mobile phones with Galileo chips, people, including disabled citizens, can guide themselves in cities, know when the next bus will arrive. In fact, the list of practical applications is nearly endless. The two satellites of the Soyuz maiden flight from French Guiana are indeed true heralds of a new space constellation. And in coming years, the term Galileo will be a household reference for hundreds of millions of users across Europe and around the world.